Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Detroit Region SCCA Sim Racing Series here on Apex Racing TV. My name is Ron Mullins. Alongside me here in the commentary booth is Tom Dillon, and in the virtual production hauler, we have our old buddy Josh Wilkie. We welcome you all to round one of the season here for the MX5s racing tonight at the ever-memorable and ever-historic Virginia International Raceway. It's a track that many SCCA members know and love. It hosted the SCCA National Runoffs for the past few years, along with many other regional SCCA events throughout the season as well as the classes of IMSA when they make their yearly vaunt here to this track in Virginia, as well as a slew of different motorcycle series. It's a great track, and with these MX-5s, I think where it's just set to put on a fantastic race here with this 30-minute race we have coming up later on this evening. That to put on the great racing that you'll see here later on tonight, you're, you need to have some equally great sponsors. One of those, and one of the great sponsors we have here for the Detroit Region SCCA Sim Racing Series is Superlap. And in fact, we have someone waiting to talk about Superlap. Joining us now in the commentary booth as I bring him in here, drag him by the collar, is Dan Cycle. Now, uh, Dan, thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth tonight. Would you like to tell the viewers about uh, what would you like to tell the viewers about Superlap and what y'all have to offer? Sure. We uh, have a business here with eight simulators. The core business is uh, to rent seat time for practice, but we also offer special events like Time Attack, Challenge, 
uh, drop-in race nights, leagues, coaching, uh, and private events. A lot to offer, and of course, it being basically a sim racing arcade, so to speak, it is definitely heaven on earth for sim racer. Now, obviously, a sim racing studio doesn't just grow up from the ground with some water and sunlight. So how exactly did Superlap come to be? Back in 2019, uh, I started selling sims, building sims on my own to, uh, locally here. Uh, from there, I met uh, a team called Phase Competition. They're a IMSA GT4 team. I did some sim consultation for them. And from that, I met my uh, partner, James. Uh, he also was bit by the sim bug. And we both had the same idea to uh, put a studio together. So we got to work and a year later, we opened the doors. I'll tell you what, that is a pretty good story. And there is a way to sign up to get a chance to drive at the facility that you have. So would you like to tell the viewers about that? Yeah, go to uh, superlap.world. And there you can select open track events and other race events. You can book your time slot and we'll handle the rest for you. And I was actually scrolling through the Superlap website earlier and I saw some merchandise there. I may have to snag that uh, before the end of the season in early May. Now, thank you for, so much for joining us here in the commentary booth. And lastly, before we let you go so you can have a chance to qualify for this race we have later on tonight, is there anyone that you'd like to give a thanks to or shout out? Sure. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife and little boys for putting up with all the late nights to get us here. Uh, my mom and dad for all the support. Uh, my business partner, James, uh, putting the time in with me to make it happen. And one special shout out to Eric. He is out on the track. He is here at the studio with us. He's in the pink super lap. So let's give him a round of applause. I feel like I can't applause. Otherwise, my uh, noise suppression may uh, pick that up and block it. But Dan, thank you so much for joining us here in the commentary booth. Good luck tonight in tonight's MX5 race. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And that was Dan Cycle from Superlap, one of the proud partners of this series located in Woodward Avenue in Berkeley, Michigan. Superlap is a sim drive studio, a.k.a. Sim Racers Heaven. With professional grade simulators, Superlap is a premier racing and driving experience venue where you can meet and compete with your friends and just other people. Uh, whether you're looking for some added time behind the wheel before a race, looking to get some good seat time, Superlap is a place to go. And the world of sim racing fills both roles, really, if you just want to have a good time or get some experience behind the wheel. Just ask reigning three-time Formula One world champion Max Verstappen, who spends a lot of time in the sim honing his craft and having a good time doing it as well. If you'd like to drive on some of the best sim racing equipment there is against both AI racers and other people, or even just do some hot laps there, then you should definitely check out superlap.world to learn learn more superlap is one of the proud partners of the drseca sim racing series so with that out of the way tom thank you for joining us you probably want to use a bathroom while we're going through that at the start of this broadcast thank you for joining us here in the commentary booth tonight now we're here with the mx5s at vir it's a known quantity when it comes to a lot of these sim racers i'm personally expecting a uh, really uh, 120 mile an hour game of leapfrog here tonight so tom what are you expecting from the racers here tonight yeah, well, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. I love MX-5s. They're so uh, unique in terms of how you uh, you have to race them. They're almost akin to go-kart racing, you know, actually how slow they are and how fast the guys uh, get going, that you really do have to pick your moves at the right time. Qualifying not being particularly important, uh, all about uh, all about sort of, you know, picking when to dive down the inside and, and, and doing things like that, making sure you're not falling down the train. And uh, a pretty interesting track as well, I have to say, uh, VIR, uh, VIR not one that I'm uh, particularly used to, uh, but it is one that I know delivers some cracking racing at times. I think as a Brit, you have a pretty good excuse not to know this track too well. However, it is a brilliant facility in Virginia, a grand total of uh, 17 corners, the final turn being 17A if you discount all the uh, named corners with a 14A looking at some of the corner numbers here on this track it reminds me of an algebra exam back in school so there's a whole lot of corners for these drivers to negotiate none being more important than oak tree turn 12 before you go on to that very long back straightaway unfortunately the oak tree that it was named after got struck by lightning back in 2015 so sadly the tree is no longer there however that corner is incredibly important especially in this qualifying session that we're in now 12 minutes on the clock uh, of this 15 minute long session. It's Bauer at the front right now at a 207.501. Pretty good lap time there and we're seeing these drivers. This is Bryce Salmon tailing. There's David Bauer at the front of this massive train of MX-5s going through. That was South Bend, turn 10. 
that they just went through. Really important to be in the slipstream here for this qualifying session. It can cost you quite a lot of time if you aren't in that slipstream. So I think when it comes time for the race later on this evening, that's going to be a massive part of deciding who takes a checkered flag in this 30-minute race. Uh, it, it absolutely is, but, you know, I, I suppose as long as you're in those front two rows, you're in with a massive, massive chance of taking the win at the end of the 30-minute race. I'm not too sure. I haven't been able to check the regulations uh, in too much detail. I don't believe we'll be getting pit stops here. I think this is just going to be a typical MX5-style sprint race. And, you know, the good thing about these MX5 cars is that at the top level of our racing, not necessarily saying that this is right at the top level, but at these sort of very high-standard leagues... Uh, you get a very high optimization of how fast these guys can go uh, around the circuits because you spend a lot of time uh, driving these cars in iRacing, particularly in your formative years, so to speak. And uh, right now, that's being reflected in the lap times run. Uh, Bauer is at the top of the order, 107, 207.5, uh, I should say, 207.8. There's only three tenths of a second uh, in between our top two, only five tenths of a second in the top three and less, uh, just over a second actually, separating uh, the entirety of the top seven. So it's so, so close out on the track right now. And uh, with the amount of slipstream, albeit it will be quite difficult to get your lap in because you've got quite a lot of traffic to deal with. But if you can get in that slipstream, get the right amount of traffic, should be looking good to get some faster lap times coming. I think with how close this field is, it's really going to show the racing that we have in store for you later on this evening. There's going to be a razor thin uh, level of, well, a margin of error, a razor thin margin of error for these drivers. If you make some small little mistake, you'll be sent basically into the shadow realm. You'll get sent well down the field. I mean, if the top seven in this qualifying session are just about separated by a second, you got to imagine when it comes time for this race, we are going to see a massive pack of Mazda MX-5s here. These drivers are on their final laps, about 30 seconds left to go here in this qualifying session. So I think before we get into the race itself, we should probably talk about the people that put on this show, and that is the DRSCCA, the Detroit region of the Sports Car Club of America, one of the oldest regions of the SCCA, being founded all the way back in 1948, only four years after the SCCA was founded nationally. The region has over 1,400 members, making it one of the biggest in the whole of the SCCA as well. And it's not hard to see why with a solid schedule of road racing, rally cross, autocross, road rallies, and street survival events as well. The region has over 40 events this upcoming racing season, and that doesn't even include this series, which is running from tonight through to the first week of May. Now, you can check out all the information relating to the Detroit region of the SCCA at drscca.org to find some more information about how you can make your way to one of these wonderful events. Me being from the autocross side of things here in the Philadelphia region, I'm more looking forward to the autocross side of things their season is actually starting in May. They have, I think, about five autocross events. I should have written that down here in my notes for this broadcast, but a pretty good uh, season of events that they have coming up here and season of events here with the Sim Racing Series, as I said, running from now until the beginning of May. So we have a pretty good season ahead of us starting off tonight at Virginia. And I think this qualifying session is in the dying stage as we're following Russell, Russell Soto, who's P3 in this qualifying session, wasn't able to improve his time. So he'll be third in this qualifying session. The checkered flag has come out, actually came out about two minutes ago already. So it's looking pretty good for Bauer as these drivers are saying their final laps. Bauer at the top of the order, but Lin just jumped up into second position. Two minutes, so 7.7. .7, so only two turns a second in it at the line, but it's so, so close, as I said. It took him uh, three minutes or so uh, once the checkered flag for everyone to finish that lap. So I believe... Uh, it Lin is the last of them to cross the line. Uh, so you order Boya from Lin, from Hill, from Soto and Salmon, unless Jeffrey Novak uh, can do anything as he comes up to the line. So actually a couple of drivers uh, still yet to take that checkered flag. I jumped the gun a little bit there and it's so, again, difficult for Jeffrey just to keep this car poised. Very interesting driving style that these uh, MX-5 require. Obviously, they've not got a great deal of mechanical grip. Tend to uh, understeer a little bit, but then, uh, you know, on the exit of the corner, they actually start to oversteer a little bit. It's quite interesting how you have to drive these MX-5s. So let's see what these guys can do as they get to the line. Jeffrey Novak is the man that we are following. Here's 2 minute 13.9. Not particularly fast at the moment. We'll see if he can jump up. Obviously, not set a particularly representative lap time so far. As he crosses the line, he is able to jump up. It's a much better 2 minute 12.4. So into 21st uh, position position for him. Top five seeming relatively stable for the time being though. And uh, we sort of expected it from MX5. So the fact that we get a very, very competitive qualifying session and that's exactly what we've got. 
Yeah, I think this is a great uh, show of what we're going to have later on this evening. A fairly tight field, 28 cars setting a qualifying time. Really only one outlier, one driver not to break into the 2 minute 20 barrier, below the 2 minute 20 barrier, I should say, but still incredibly close field that we have right now. And it's looking like it's going to be Bauer leading them to green. No draw, actually, I believe Yanchi Lin is still at there on track, has not towed back to the pits. However, I believe he did take the checkered flag, so he will not be able to improve his lap time here. He's just getting a little bit of seat time here. This is heading into the roller coaster section, turn 14. A very tricky corner that will be used by plenty of these drivers here tonight as an overtaking opportunity. However, I've called many a races with these MX-5s or even some spec racer Fords as well with drivers trying to make a move, heading into turn 14 and it going cataclysmically wrong. Thankfully here at this track, we have a lot of grass runoff for these drivers to use that will definitely be used here in this race that we have coming up for you in just a few moments time. I believe the check flag has come at in this qualifying session we're going to get the starting grid for you in just a few moments time fairly big field from this opening race you love to see a big field and it's going to be david bauer leading them to green in the breakfast for dinner car at a two minute 7.501 yanchi lin in p2 justin hill in p3 russell soto in fourth bryce salmon in fifth aaron rudder there in p number six that's uh D david moreno in p number seven john grimm in eighth michael schmidt in ninth and that chad griedel running at the top 10 you can go through the rest of these tom well, in uh, row six, we've got Christopher Murray and Devin Box. That's uh, oh, that's page that we've got for now. We'll scroll down. Uh, row seven is Andrew Gross and Richard Shaib. Uh, William Lamb and uh, Corey Gordinia is in row eight. Stephen Conn and Dustin Crooks, row nine. We've Garrett Whitson uh, and Mike Nutterson on row ten. Uh, Andrew Moed and Jacob Moed on row 11 with Jeffrey Novak and Athiel Gorey, the rest of your top 24. And then going through the rest of the field, we've got David uh, Grunzicki, uh, Grunzicki, I apologize if I absolutely butchered that pronunciation. He'll be starting this race in 25th. Michael Rodriguez in 26th. Uh, Tom, I feel like you cut off right just there to give me the hardest names to pronounce. Uh, Todd uh, Globoski there in P number 27, Jonathan Edwards in 28th, Reese Everd in a 29th, and that's Eric Christensen running at the top 30, that's Edwin Shuey's in P20, uh, P31 my apologies, uh, Steven Schrezer in the th uh, 32nd, that's uh, Dan Cycle that we just talked to at the start of this broadcast, he did not set a qualifying time, he'll be starting this race in P33 then Dan Mount running at your field in 34th, we'll see if those drivers actually take the green here and join this grid that we have set up here on pit lane before they start the formation lap in just a few moments time i'm shocked that they didn't set a qualifying time however it, it could be an interesting strategy just to avoid the carnage heading into turn one i've seen up before in many other series that have commentated here whether it be the apex racing league gt3 trophy back during the summer whether it be some other lower level sports car racing i've seen plenty of accidents heading into turn one so tom at the start do you think that's going to be the big trouble spot for these drivers i don't think necessarily that it is a strategy from uh, a lot of the drivers rather this is a very difficult track to get a clean lap in on um you've got a lot of grass you know you don't have many forgiving areas of run-up you've got a lot of grass all around the circuit and a lot of the drivers actually were in traffic for a lot of that race so it's not unforeseeable that over the course of 15 minutes or however long qualifying was in the end i believe it was 15 minutes it's not unforeseeable that actually there was uh, a little bit of a problem in setting their laps. I, I, I can see that very much being the possibility. I don't personally buy that anyone's had that sort of strategy around a track like this. We know it's really difficult to overtake. Not as difficult in an MX-5, but it's quite difficult uh, to overtake. And I like to have the trust as well. There's not really too much carnage uh, into turn one. These drivers are all very, very competent. They all know what they're doing, know exactly what the score is. And you'd like to think we're all going to be nice and cautious into turn one. But it's also an unforgiving track, so you never know. I have seen enough cars go flying into turn number one to know that wishing for a great start there when it kind of bottlenecks heading into one. Yeah, I mean, I won't call it wishful thinking. It could very easily happen. These drivers are clean. Some of the best that the Detroit region has to offer. However, it would not shock me if we saw some sort of schmazzle heading into turn number one. Now, before we get the green here in just a few moments time, it should be time to uh, thank some other sponsors of this series. One of them being Waterford, uh, Waterford Hills Road Racing as to, uh, as 
Metro Detroit's only permanent road course, Waterford Hills in Clarkston, Michigan, is a wonderful spot to spectate racing. The host of six uh, six weekend long uh, club racing series, a competition driving school, and a slew of track day events all throughout this upcoming year. This 1.5 mile circuit should be on every Detroit race fan's bucket list. Even if you don't want to drive, you can actually just watch the action in person for just five dollars to get your entry into that wonderful facility up there in Michigan. You can check out waterfordhills.com for some more details. And finally, if you want to get closer to the action, you can check out michigantournmarshals.org there so you can learn how to become a race marshal and also get your ticket to the best seats in the house. You can check out them at uh, michigantournmarshals.org there. No no uh, capitals, no spaces, no nothing like that. Well, you can't have spaces. In a website name, you can check out them. After you watch this broadcast here on Apex Racing TV, where I think we're in store for one heck of a race, lots of cars, lots of trouble-ridden spots that these drivers are going to hit in this upcoming race. Slipstreaming will be the name of the game going down that back straightaway when they come out of Oak Tree. We're seeing them heading into turn 14 here, that slow trundle as they go downhill, where in these MX-5s, you're not really in conscious control of your car most of the time, if you're being honest. It is a very hard to drive. It's a fun car to drive. It's one of the most fun experiences you can have in iRacing. However, it's not the easiest car in the world. You're not Sunday cruising in these MX-5s. However, the racing that we're going to have here in this upcoming 30-minute race is going to be an absolute stormer to watch, and hopefully the viewers here on Apex Racing TV will enjoy it as well. The Porsche pace car makes that slight meandering right-hand turn to go down the pit road. The field is now in the hands of your pole sitter, who's gunned it. The field is on their way to catch that green flag, and then after that green flag comes out, the drivers are going to be on their way, which they are now heading into turn number one. It's a pretty good start there from your pole sitter. Pretty bad start from Yan Chi Lin as he's getting shuffled at. He's going to be on that outside line heading into turn number one. Russell Soto now trying to find a way to sneak his way into P2. I think he'll be able to get that move done successfully as he exit turn one and head into NASCAR bend of two and three. Fairly clean start through all the drivers making their way through turn one. Surprisingly clean. We still have a boatload of more corners for these drivers to negotiate before they end this lap one. However, so far, so clean. It's a really perfect stall from the guys actually over the uh, course of the first lap. And by the looks of things, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a dive down the inside here. This could end in tears all the way onto the outside line. Is that number 27 machine, but he's able to hold on to the spot. Oh, the big, oh, no, it does end in tears. I called it very, very early. Out to the driver's left. He spins around into the barrel. Try and get a replay up of that, uh, if at all possible, in just a few moments. Time as someone follows him into the accident. And I think it was inevitable that we were going to get some kind of incident here on lap one. A couple of drivers' days ending very, very early indeed. And uh, initial thoughts, Rod, that seemed relatively needless. Well, I think I just barely got a glimpse of that accident in the corner of my eye. I think the curbs had something to do with it. We're going to take a look at a replay heading into the snake section here. A very tricky section and all sorts of race cars going side by side through this section. Clip that curb on the inside, a little bit of contact with another car. And that was the reason why we saw him spinning like a top off the track, hitting that tire barrier. And you can see another car following him there in sympathy. That was a much harder hit too. I think both of those drivers, you can see some damage on them already. Their front Bumpers you know, shriveled up like a stack of dimes there after that hard contact with that inside tire barrier. I think that second car that made contact probably broke off a wheel. That's an unfortunate way to kick off their 30-minute race. Not an unfortunate start for the drivers running up towards the front. It is still your pole sitter, David Bauer, leading the field. Russell Soto in P2. Yanchi Lin running at your podium in third. We're riding on board with Justin Hill as they're about to end lap one and complete, uh, complete lap one and start lap two here. So far, so clean. And as Tom, you pulled off one of the greatest commentator jinxes I've ever seen. I think I may have just done it there. We're seeing Russell Soto try and go for a move here. Three wide between the drivers running in the podium position. They made contact heading through turn number one. A little bit of contact between Soto and Bauer. He's getting shuffled out and is actually going to drop down to P4. We'll see if he tries to pull off a move to regain P3 on Hill. Heading into NASCAR Ben. Yanshi Lin going for a move around the outside. He barely gets it done. He does get it done as he go into turn number four. Beautiful move there for the driver to move up into the top position right now. Russell Soto had a fairly, it was nice to see him running at the front very, very briefly. I'm sure he'll want to have some sort of return back to that front position. Absolutely, and the Chinese driver takes himself into the lead of the race. He'll be delighted with that move. Here's a battle going on here. It's a 12th position. It's, uh, at the moment, 
Corey Gordon are trying to get himself into that spot. Looks to the outside line this time by there. There's a little bit of slipstream and help uh, from the car on Lamb here, actually, by Box. So as we go down into the next sequence of corners, left, then right up the hill. Not really an overtaking opportunity. Good thing about the MX-5 is you can squeeze down the inside, move for second position as well as Hill gets past Soto. So he's into second spot. This is a battle now as Corey Gordon is under a little bit of pressure. He's going to lose out on a spot, lose out on two spots, all the way down to 15th. There's now here is Shaheed down the inside line into 13th position. That's a really interesting move. That just goes to show you if you don't wait for your opportunities to come to you inside of an MX-5 race where we're all in the train like this run, you are going to lose one or two positions. Sometimes it is best to bring out a crowbar and just force that move more than anything else. That was an unfortunate series of events for Gordoner, who I think just ran really wide coming through South Bend as we're seeing a battle here between John Grimm and that's a uh, Salmon that he's battling with heading into turn number 14. They get through there fairly clean as we're seeing some blinking there, at least from my perspective, of John Grimm's car blinking in and out. Thankfully, the driver of the number 21 car is back on track. It looked like he was being abducted by a UFO there briefly as he went through the roll coaster section before they went into hog pen of turn number 17. Yanshi Lin has actually pulled a pretty decent lead between himself and Hill. That's seven tenths of a second separating those two as we're seeing Soto maybe try an eye move heading into turn number one. He backs out of it here. I think Hill and Soto may have to work together because if these three drivers right behind Lin start to battle quite hard, I think Lin may just drift off, drive off into the distance, drive into the sunset and take a commanding win. And I think we're going to take a look at a, uh, a replay of some of the battling that we had earlier on in this race. We're taking a look at now, and this was a battle for the lead. It was, and there were three wide for a brief moment. We're on board with a 30 car, and they were three wide, and down into turn one. Well, it all got a little bit messy, but there on that inside line, the 30 car of Lin is able to hold on to the lead. So overall, it turns into a bit of a defense for his leading spots as uh, we go back to live pictures and we see Lin has a little bit of a buffer in hand five minutes into this race 25 minutes to go and he's got two or three cart uh, carts car lamps uh, down there force a habit uh, four times a second that translates to uh, out on the racetrack Hill and Soto second and third with Bauer in fourth so second third and fourth all in a bit of a train then fifth has their own train going on Bryce Salmon in second spot in that little train he's got Grimm just in front of him so they'll start to try and battle uh, this is again where I suppose you want to try and work together almost try and catch up to those guys uh, just in front of you and that'll be almost the uh, the plan of these guys inside of the top five the question is all of a sudden if they start to squabble who is uh, who wants to be the charge uh, for that train and we'll also be interested to see how this slipstream works because right now for my liking Hill is very comfortable in the lead but as they go down the straight run two tenths a second it falls down at significant yeah, we're going to see all sorts of battling here. That was all sorts of sideways there for Bryce Salmon heading into turn 14. I think he had to really saw at that MX-5's wheel to keep that thing going in a straight line. There might have been a little bit of contact, more contact made between Bryce Salmon and John Grimm heading into turn number 17. We're, we are going to see a lot of bump drafting here from these MX-5 cars. I've already seen some damaged front end and some messed up front bumpers on these MX-5 Cup cars already in this race. Speaking of messed up front bumpers, who's at exiting the pits? Right in front of these drivers, we'll see Russell Soto try and go for a move here into turn number one. He makes contact with Hill. It's deja vu after how those two came to blows earlier on in this race. Justin Hill shuffling back. There might be a little bit of damage on the front end of that MX-5. But Soto once again going for a very bold move into turn number one, making contact. This is Bryce Salmon now battling here with Grimm. And oh, oh he's okay. getting spun around there after contact. That was with Murray that made contact with heading into NASCAR Bend. That, I think, was just two cars fighting for the same piece of real estate on track. We'll have to take a look at a replay to see what in the world happened there, but already drivers coming to blows in the top 10. Yeah, I can see the feed on my other monitor here, and I think actually what happened was Bryce Salmon didn't see the car that was uh, on his outside or inside line. Uh, we'll see the replay here, and I, I think I know what to expect here. As I said, I don't think Bryce Salmon quite saw that that other car was there, or he thought he was clear or something, maybe got a call from his spotter that he was clear, goes across the track, and then uh, actually, I think, did he move in the braking zone, possibly? Got into the braking zone. Other car, we'll see the, another replay of this. The other car on the outside line. Uh, here we go, no, we're back to live pictures and then back to the replay. So the other car uh, on the outside line, I wonder if maybe he's sort of moved over in the braking zone thinking he's clear and then possibly uh, there's a chance that the other car just got the braking a little bit better mm -hmm. and there you go, he's squeezing. I think that's exactly what's happened, you know. 
Yeah, I think that was a very good observation from you there, Tom. I think that was just, you could call it a miscommunication between those two. I think he, he thought that he was clear. I think Bryce Hammond thought that he was clear heading into that corner and just tried to clear Christopher Murray, but Murray had a much better run in the breaking zone heading into NASCAR Bend. He had a much better run in the breaking zone heading into turn 14 last uh, this time by and got the move done on Grimm to move into that final top five spot. Tom, right as you were saying that those drivers may decide to work together to close that gap between themselves and the fight of Lynn, Bauer, Soto, and Hill farther up the road. We can see those drivers squabbling in all sorts of ways. Grim, I think, has come into the pits, if I'm not mistaken, that, or it could be a small little, he's blinked from our screens yet again. The aliens have got him, and he's actually popped back into the pits there. He hasn't rejoined the track, I think. Could there be some sort of massive connection issue here for Grim? I think I heard a car trundling down pit road, so maybe Grim actually had to pull into the pits here. Maybe some sort of penalty, maybe a weird strategic call, possibly some damage on that MX-5. Not too sure as he's blinking even in the pits. So not ideal there for John Grimm, who was running in that P5 spot, then got shuffled back, and then immediately pulled into the pits. Very strange run there for that driver, who's running in a decent position, has been abducted by a UFO on multiple occasions throughout this broadcast already, even though we're less than 10 minutes into this half an hour race. Not a good start for them, not a good start for Bryce Salmon either, as he's trying to break his way back into the top 10. Already a third of the way through, though, and now watching this battle between Bryce Salmon and Box heading through the chicane. They're in a little bit of no man's land at the moment. They are free to battle for the time being without really concerning themselves with catching up to those guys ahead because it is quite a sizable gap by the looks of things, about nine seconds uh, on the screen. Here we go, down into the next corner. A little bit of bump drafting almost from Bryce Salmon. They go up the hill through the chicane, but still not able to find a way through this track. All about setting yourself up for that run down into the major breaking zones, turn one being one of them, but also down uh, well, into turn seven, really another big straight, uh, but you've got so many straights, the back straight as well, down into turn 14, that's an overtaking spot, as here we go, trying to set himself up on that wider line is Bryce Salmon, uh, avenging himself a little bit for what I think he'll class as his own mistake, really, uh, down into, or just a couple of laps ago, as they go down into turn one, he's got the slipstream, but I think he's going to be a little bit too far back to make this move, so Bryce Salmon in the 877 has to stay where he is for the time being, and uh, again, I think he can take his time with this move, as I said, but he's put so much pressure on. He might not want to take his time as they go down into the next corner, but it's a little bit too fast for them. At this stage of the race, it's currently Box and Salmon, pretty much in no man's land right now. The gap between Schmidt and Box, P8 and P9, is about nine seconds, so they have no cars in front of them. And if they start to battle hard, we could see Lamb get involved in that fight. And while Salmon and Lamb, right there, the other two drivers with last names very similar to high class cuts of meat there, currently running in P10 and P11. Can you tell I didn't have a very heavy dinner? There, this is David Moreno trying to go for a move heading into turn number one. This is the between Salmon and Box heading into turn number one. He doesn't go for a move there. Will have been a little bit audacious if he tried to go for a move there. However, these two, I think, are just deciding, hey, we're in the midsection of this race. Ten minutes in, about 19 left to go. So you can't really say that it's crunch time for any of these drivers. So I think we may see in the next ten minutes of, these ra uh, of this race, these drivers taking it a little bit easier than they were doing in the early stages. So I wear is a concern, isn't it? They're not on the most durable of compound, these uh, MX-5s. And uh, yeah, over the course of a longer race, you can uh, start to have a few problems with your tyre wear. David Moreno is under uh, a little bit of pressure. Well, David, not 100% sure on uh, the pronunciation of your name. Uh, I'm afraid maybe someone can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but uh, David Moreno down uh, into the uh, next part of the track. He's got a, a bit of a sandwich here. Murray just in front of him, Gross uh, just behind him. And as they go into the heavy breakings, then the number 51 stays where he is. They'll go down into, uh, well, past the, uh, not the pit lane. I'm not sure where this is on the track run. You're more of a VIR guy uh, than I am. But uh, either way, I think Moreno has to stay where he is for the time being. That's the slightly frustrating thing about these MX-5s as well. They, they've got such a sort of low top speed that you get up there quite quickly. In the, and the slipstream can have limited effects at times. We're down into uh, the next braking zone. David Moreno stays where he is again, but under a lot of pressure from Gross. 
really usually in these MX-5 races, you're looking to see tracks that give the opportunity for these MX-5s to stretch their legs. But with how long the back straightaway is here at VIR, you pretty much overextend your legs as we see a big puff of smoke here heading into 14. Who's that spinning around like a top? I believe that's Lamb that's gone yep. off the circuit. So not a good run for him. Not sure what in the world happened to William Lamb. We may have to take a look at a replay Ooh, to see the what in the world happened Lins to the driver Lins of the number 11. Ooh, as, as Linz had a spin. Uh, sorry to cut you off there, Ron, but uh, something quite significant. He's had a spin on an off-track or something. He fell down. He had about two, three tenths of a second in hand compared to the next driver. And then all of a sudden, he falls all the way down to the back of the train in third or actually slots in. We've got a replay of what happens. So we're all over it. Is We've got three wide action down into uh, this part of the track. I was going to say this is turn one, but it's not turn one. Uh, Garrett Whitson goes down the inside and is able to find his way into a top ten spot. So he'll be... Uh, again, pretty happy with being able to make that move relatively easily, but there's a bit of a counter-attack here. Box goes back down the inside. Whitson on the outside line, holds onto the spot, squirming all the way through it, squirming onto the grass, and through goes Box, but through also goes Shahib as we stay side-by-side side running. I believe uh, the 10th spot is able to hold on to that, and I think uh, Devin Box now has to slot in behind just into 11th position, so Richard uh, Shahib does very very well here is a replay of what happened to our former race leader then as Lin wasn't in the lead actually so he'd lost the lead got himself just ahead on the outside line as they went down into turn one it was too wide running for a moment and into the first corner on the racetrack sweeps all the way around the outside line and I think he might get a help here or a tag of some description or does he actually just lose all the spots from a miscalculated move that looks more like, that's what happens. That's a hugely miscalculated move on the outside line, Rod. And further point in case of exactly what I was uh, what I was saying. Yeah, that was just a terrible series of events there for Yanchi Lin. At one point leading this race, he was going side by side with David Barra. And just sadly for him, he's still running in that P3 spot right now. as a half a second gap between himself and Hill there. So it looks like he's somewhat comfortable at the moment. Again, a half a second gap in these MX-5s is practically nothing. So we'll probably see that diminish in the next few moments. This is some hard battling here with David Moreno. We're riding on board with him going down the start finish straight away as uh, Lin is now moving up in to P2. Moreno now trying to go around the outside here, trying to find a way to get past Murray and Gross right in front of him. Maybe going three wide, possibly going three wide, heading into turn number one. He didn't go for the move, made a little bit of contact actually with Murray as he went into turn number one. Andrew Gross, the front car of this fight right now. Murray looking to find a way to get past him. Then Moreno looking to eye up a move on the both of them. Then Schmidt as the other bottom car of these uh, four right now, just acting as our camera car in this fight. He's getting a good view of a very in intense battle right now as Murray slips down the inside heading into turn number four to get the move done there on Gross. That was a fairly textbook stuff there and a terrible series of events as, oh my god, we nearly saw contact there between Michael Schmidt and uh, David Moreno heading into turn number five, 5A. Five uh, that's that's the section of the track where he started to get confused number-wise there, but regardless of what corner number it was, it was still very close between those two as he went into the snake section they're, they're very lucky that that didn't result in that absolute just bawling your eyes out session if they made contact. Well, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Ron. I, I struggle with most of this racetrack. It, it, all, it all looks the same. I really do struggle my corner numbers around uh, VIR. Probably done two, three laps of it in my life, so maybe I need to maybe you know, to get on that ready for next season. I need to do a little bit of a look through the field here. Uh, While well, we have a moment in the race. I say we have a moment in the race. We're just in a change for the lead as Lin uh, gets himself back into the lead of the race. It uh, was side by side with Bayer for a moment, and in typical fashion, we're going to switch actually to the race leaders still having a battle. Lin in the top of the order. Three, four tenths of a second ahead of Bauer. Soto uh, just ahead of Hill. Hill falls back a little bit, but that battle for second position still rages on as the uh, well front runners actually start to spread out again. Seems to be a thing. They're going to battle all the way down into turn one, and that might be the case here once again. We'll see if Lin, as there's back market traffic involved, will find himself under pressure, but then they close up, start a bit more formation flying through the infield part of the circuit. Here we go, down into turn one. I don't think Bauer is going to be close enough to be able to make a move and down into turn one by the looks of things. 
he is not the back marker traffic playing ball as well uh, even though there's no technical blue flags uh, in iRacing you are encouraged to uh, make your way through if at all possible so anyway while we keep a close eye on those leaders we can take uh, and give a little bit of a love to the rest of the drivers in the field that maybe haven't been mentioned so much on the broadcast today Con is one of them Stephen Con doing a, a pretty decent run here up in 14th position when you've got a 30 grid field a uh, 30 car field I should say uh, making up a grid. It's very easy uh, to not mention some of those guys at the back, but all of these guys are having uh, interesting drives of their own, and Quan is right on the pace of those around him, actually a little bit faster than most of those around him, in the low uh, 112s, which is actually the fastest of all the drivers outside of the top 12, which is uh, pretty impressive. Another car into the pits. Uh, Gordinia is the driver there, and uh, he was having an interesting time earlier on in this race however now unfortunately has to come into the pits for a little bit of damage Ron you can see on the front of his car and the driver following him in as well similar story yeah, that's Andrew Mowood right behind with a missing front bumper, I think. Maybe there's a little bit of contact between these two. It's very hard to make front bumper to front bumper contact. I think that, was that just a pass-through penalty from the two of them? That is, yep, it just went right through the pit. So just giving a quick wave to their crews, I think that's what they did there. Entering the pits and exiting it right away there. So that's Andrew Mowood and Gordinier uh, rejoining the race there. Currently running P21 and P22 right now. That's that's Grodzinski in P number 16. I want to try his name. We were following him a little bit. I want to get his name pronunciation right on the second time. So hopefully I redeem myself after the butcher job I did towards the start of this broadcast. We're following the battle for the lead. This is Russell Soto who's actually been shuffled back a little bit and is now trying to get a move done here on Hill. He's around the outside going through this curved start finish straight away here. They're about to hit the start finish line now to begin lap 10. It's Yanshi Lin in the lead. Hill blinking quite a lot here. So, uh, uh, lots of uh, UFO encounters here from these drivers throughout this race thus far. But Hill's actually going to hold off the challenge from Soto. and broke them a little bit, heading into turn number one and held off that position there quite nicely there. Meanwhile, Bauer actually dropping back quite a long ways from the back of Yanshi Lin. The gap is about 1.3, nearly 1.4 seconds, separating these two drivers right now as they head into turn number four. Left hook, Yanshi Lin, a name that I recognize from both the Ray Esports series that comes here on on Apex Racing TV just about every Tuesday as well as the Weekend Warrior Series. He's a name that I've covered before and he is once again one of the star drivers in this series currently running P1. He's led I think the most amount of laps so far with about 10 minutes left to go here. 10 laps on the board so Yanchi Lin has to be our favorite coming in to the uh, final 10 minutes of this race. Uh, who are you keeping your eyes on Tom? I'm still keeping an eye on Lin, who's got a second in hand now. So he suddenly pulled a little bit of a gap to the drivers behind him. I have been battling a little bit over the last uh, lap and a half or so. But this is a big opportunity for a man who hasn't really controlled the race as he would have liked when you're in the lead like this and you've been the fastest man throughout the day. You want to really be controlling the race. Hasn't quite been able to do that. But as we head into the final third, all of a sudden he is starting uh, to control this race. And if he can just get to about a second and a half, two seconds, that's a pretty sizable margin uh, in regard to uh, an MX-5, where you so often see uh, winning margins of about five tenths of a second. Or indeed, in the real life uh, MX-5 series, you often see uh, gaps much less than that, the MX-5 Cup uh, in real life. Always a fascinating watch. Also keeping an eye on Christopher Murray. He's in fifth position at the moment. They're quite a ways off the lead of the race. But he's doing a good job of defending ahead of Gross, who despite having a, a green stripe on the uh, timing tower, don't let that uh, deter you. He is driving a bright yellow car. So uh, for the uh, benefit of the viewers at home, that's uh, the driver just behind. And then Moreno behind that. So this could be a three-way fight for that top five spot. And again, should be mentioned in the 30 driver grid, a top five spot, pretty impressive side-by-side -side action uh, for second place in the race. Then as Bauer goes around the outside, sorry, Hill goes around the outside of Bauer. Bauer back on the inside line or trying to hold on to this spot as uh, Hill blinking in and out of existence for a moment, forces that all the way onto the curb. Bauer still on the inside line. They're three wide for a little bit. Soto looking to capitalize on whatever he can from this battle. Hill on the inside line, had to get the elbows out, but is able to find a way through. Now has an inside line to cut off. Bauer goes off the track, almost is that oh, in, in on the grass, and this time he is onto the grass, not just losing the spot. There's a back marker cutting back across the circuit. Lin just about avoids him, but the man who is starting to control this race is all of a sudden out of the running. 
yeah what in the world happened to him heading into nascar ben we may have to take a look at a replay once this battle between bauer and soto finally cools off bauer and hill made contact about seven times heading through turn number one i didn't even know that was possible going through one single corner i'm shocked that you can see still hard battling here between bauer and soto heading into south bend here one of them has to back out and neither of them do yanchi lin is sizing these two up smelling blood in the water if these two come to blows with how hard they've been battling it's extremely likely they fan out and go single file heading through oak tree that's a smart move because if you're going side by side you're going to be dragging the both of you down like you have an anchor tied to your leg going onto this back straight away so russell soto slotting into that p3 position unless yan chi lin tries to go for a move heading into turn 14 which wouldn't shock me you can see very hard defending there from soto blocking that inside line however you don't want to block the inside line heading into the small low meandering kink of the left hander because then you are immediately hit with a 90 degree right as Soto goes for the move there. Brilliant move on Bauer heading into turn 14. Fantastically controlled but he slides going down into the going into the roller coaster section and it's going to allow Bauer to slot back through Russell Soto. You can see him sawing at the wheel as they go through hog pen now and oh that's going off there and he's crashing. That's Bauer with a big slide as he came out of hog pen went on to that start finish straight away. He was drifting through most of those final few corners and just sadly for him he bit off too much uh, he bit off more than he could chew and sadly it ends in tears for a driver who was running in a podium position sadly for him he's going to be in a world of hurt especially if murray gross and moreno catch up to him they're not too far back so we may see those two get involved in the fight hills now extended his gap to about 2.7 seconds this is what got hill the lead in the first place we're following yanji lin heading into the nascar bend here and just did he make contact with alapka oh that was uh, that's such a shame. I'm sure Yanchi Lin is infuriated with that lap car. That was such an avoidable accident. And you can see Yanchi Lin a little bit cautious, trying to go around the outside of that lap car that was stuck in the grass. We'll save that car the, the shame of not saying who it was. But that was just incredibly avoidable. And sadly for Yanchi Lin, you're at one point leader of this race, who the both of us at line as being one to look at for. Sadly, it ends in tears. This is David Bauer with a massive drift. Was there contact between him and Yanchi? Chi Lin or between him and Soto as they went through the final corner that looked like it snapped around very quick Tom no I think he's just got over ego on the throttle honestly we'll watch it again here but by I yeah I think oh interesting I'm still inclined to believe there wasn't too much with that could be a bit of a, a net code thing there I will have to say on the back mark thing I'll come to that in a moment actually because we've got another angle of this I don't believe there was any contact might be a, a net code case they're very close together that they're, they're allowed to be close together I, they're close together I, I think he did just get over ego on the throttle though and that's a frustrating mistake to make uh, towards the end of this race still in fourth though so not uh, overall too bad here's a battle uh, for second position in the race Soto just behind uh, Lin I will say uh, Lin I'm afraid to say it's, it's an unfortunate incident with the back marker we I can't be too harsh on the back marker it is Lin's responsibility to get around him so actually uh, possibly possibly take himself uh well i suppose he'll, he'll know himself that he should have been a little bit more cautious into that corner but it's just one of those things unfortunately different speeds uh, out on the racetrack and uh, he won't be too disappointed still running well uh, in at second here danny to turn one they go then and soto is really going to start to try and uh, put that pressure on he goes to the outside line tries to squeeze his way through he squeezed to the outside line though by Lin who takes the racing line knowing that he needs to keep his run up in the corner and Soto again catches up a lot through the mid corner of turn one looking to set himself up a bit of a cutback into the uh, next corner on the track where the 30 car gets the exit and gets it well enough to hold on to this race uh, this race lead to the second place it's basically the race lead considering how far Hill has driven off into the distance about two and a half seconds separating Lynn and Hill in the dying stages of this race about three and a half minutes left to go here so not a whole lot of time left on the board I think doing the quick mass in my head it'll be about two or three laps to go if I'm not mistaken but still not a whole lot of time left to play for these drivers Murray currently running as a tail end of the top five this is uh, Richard uh, Scheib who's actually running in P11 trying to go for a move here 
while trying to size up a move and start a battle between himself. Ignore that voice crack. That's the first one of those broadcasts. Try and size up a battle on Devin Box, who's currently running in that final top 10 spot. He goes for the move, heading into five. That's a very last minute dive there, but Shy pulls it off successfully. Beautiful stuff there from the driver in the number 79 car as he breaks his way into the top 10. These two are pretty much in no man's land right now. Basically no cars around them at all. This is farther back towards the field. This is Chad Giedel in the number 42 car heading into turn one. That is Edwards right in front of him here. So we'll see if these two start to battle. And I believe it's Novak farther up the road about second up the road. So that car may get involved in this fight. This two car fight that we have between those two may turn into a three car one. In the not too distant future, this is Gross going side by side with Moreno going down the back straightaway heading into turn number 14. It's going to be a battle of the last late breakers heading into this corner who's going to size up a, the move and get it done it's going to be gross sliding his way around the outside and wasn't able to get the job done that was Moreno holding it off quite nicely there as we see some battling farther up the road with Soto and Lynn continuing to battle quite hard I think Lynn has actually gone off the track a little bit he's dropped back like a rock now bass second separating himself and Soto so I think he tried to go for a move around the outside possibly into the final corner and just sadly for him it ended in tears and he went off the track again we'll take a look at a replay here and uh well to the inside line and lynn just i think does he overcook it maybe just slightly no he's okay there he does overcook mm. it on the exit and that'll allow the number 50 car to go through any time he's still got it still got it oh can't just about hold it on but uh well i mean lynn did pretty well there to hold on to that didn't hold on to the positions though so uh, not a huge success overall uh, however, I do believe we're about to be taking the white flag in this race. Hill has started to dominate in the last few stages. This is exactly the example of being in the right place and the right time. And he's done very well. And he's about to take the white flag and he's about to presumably win unless something very, very dramatic happens here. I think the old saying, I've definitely read this in a fortune cookie before, to finish first, first you have to finish. And I think that's being put on full display here with Justin Hill. He, he hasn't been the fastest of the four that were involved in that front fight throughout a vast majority of this race. However, what he has done is just kept his car clean. There's barely even a paint chip on that MX-5. You can't even see any sort of... Uh, yeah, actually, I think there may be just a teeny tiny bit of damage on the front bumper of that car. It is very minor, though, compared to the rest of the cars in this field they're beat up front and rear bumpers a little bit of side uh, side damage as well some scraped uh, doors on these cars as we're seeing Yanchi Lin go side by side here with Soto heading into turn 14 I thought Soto was about to drift up and hit Yanchi Lin as he went into 14 oh you can see Yanchi Lin got all kinds of sideways he squirrely rides that curb on the outside of turn 15 and sadly for him that attempted overtake to move into P2 does not materialize for him meanwhile I think we're actually going to be taking the checker this time by you can see it is the checkered so it's going to be justin hill i believe taking the checkered flag to win this race here for the drs ECA sim racing series he takes a win soto finishes in p2 and yanchi lin finishes in p3 that was borderline between them taking the white flag and taking the checkered and just unfortunately for soto and lin they just didn't have enough time to get it done this is richard scheib getting overtaken by box heading into turn 14 he did hold off on that position you can see now box spinning like a top coming through turn 14 there's definitely some contact between those two i think shine attempted to do the old boot schoon boogie heading into turn 14 and sadly for box it ends in tears he is going to be finishing this race in p11 unless he spins again and loses some more time richard shine as he runs the final corner and goes onto that start finish straight away he is going to be taking the checkered flag with a being bruised and damaged mx5 there's devin box in p number 11 in the number nine car taking the checkered flag right now that's william lamb about to cross the finish line in p12 it was soto and lynn running at the podium bauer actually dropped down to p5 so he got moved put on him by murray in the dying stages of that race those two separated by about two tenths of a second at the end of that race this is gordoner going side by side i believe he's going side by side with nutson as they went down the back straight away he gets a move done well before they even breathe on the brake pedal look at the state of the front end of both of these mx5 race cars these drivers being and banging and roughing each other up 
from lights to flag here. Corey Gordoner looks like he's going to hold off on P18. Mike Nutson may try and go for a move in the final few corners of this race unless he gets a great run coming out of hog pen it looks like he's going to be finishing in p19 oh he actually gets a great run coming out of the final corner i think he may try and size up a move here to move into p18 he's cutting to the inside line running in that painted stuff towards the pit entry and he's not going to be close enough to get the move done away will be side by side actually nearly side by side as they come to the finish line nutson finishes this race in p19 a very dramatic season opener i must say for the mx5s great racing all throughout the field some drama as well some back markers getting involved but some great racing regardless uh, some fantastic racing and uh, i think hill will class himself I, i'm not gonna be harsh on him i think he'll class himself a little bit lucky uh, to have uh, won that race by 3.3 seconds but he was in the right place in the right time got himself into that leading pack early on and capitalized on a little bit of good fortune doesn't mean to say he didn't have the pace to win this race 3.3 seconds is a mighty uh, winning margin in an mx5 but uh, we've got a replay run what's happened here justin hill uh, is this after the checkered flag or is this is how he got the lead of the race thank you for uh, confirming that producer in my ear just making good on that uh, good on that mistake that was the move that ended up winning him the race. So, again, as you said, Tom, towards the, uh, the end of that race, he was at the right place at the right time and it worked out beautifully for him, I must say. I mean, he took the checkered flag, so you can't say it worked out poorly, but still fantastic stuff there. From all those drivers, great racing and lots of twists and turns as well, not only on the track, but in terms of how this race just sized up when it came to the storylines, we said, I think it was... I'm trying to think now, go through my head. It was about 15 minutes into that race, about halfway through. We were just already giving the win and the trophy to Yan Shi Lin, but after that drama with himself and the lap car, the race's complexion got turned on its head. So Tom just, I mean, that was one heck of a race. I think we have some drivers waiting in the interview waiting area as well. So Tom, would you like to bring one of these drivers in to have a chat perhaps? Uh, we can, and we've got uh, Russell Soto with us. Uh, Russell, not quite the race win today, but you got yourself into a very, very good position. Thank you very much, Tom. And yeah, absolutely, we're always hungry for the win. But overall, it was a pretty close race, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about how the race went overall for me. And uh, great racing overall. Yeah, I and mean, uh, you really had a handful there, battling with uh, Lynn throughout the race. Got the better of him uh, in the end. Just how difficult was it to get and stay past a driver like that? Oh my goodness, it was absolutely a challenge. I know he has some esports experience, and uh, I used everything I could uh, from my real life experience as well as what I know about sim racing to keep uh, keep him at bay as much as I could. But yeah, quick drivers in the top four, hundred percent. And uh, does that that excite you about the prospect of this season now and, and the fight for the championship, which I'm sure as we go through the season you'll be uh, classing yourself as part of? Absolutely, Tom. This is anybody's battle. I think this is going to be a very exciting season, uh, more exciting than Formula One at the moment. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm ex I'm pumped. I'm ready. Yeah, well, uh, little digs of Formula One there as well. Thank you for joining <laughs> us, Russell. And we'll uh, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much, Tom. That was our second place runner, Russell Soto. A really good drive for him uh, up to second place. And as I said. I'm sure that he is going to be uh, one of our championship contenders as uh, we go on throughout the course of the season. Uh, stalling uh, for a few moments while we wait uh, for just confirmation on whether we'll get uh, any more interviews, Ron. Uh, but I have to say it's quite a punchy format for this league. Just very simple. I, I, I like leagues, you know, that, that don't go for the, the fancy formats, you know, four heat races and, and finals, whatever. You just go... 15-minute practice, 30-minute uh, or 50-minute qualifying, 30-minute uh, race, and, and it proved to be a very, very nice format. Well, I, I think I may be a little bit biased, but I do kind of enjoy the somewhat compl complicated formats. One that you may see in the Apex Racing Academy F4 Championship. That'll be, they're actually entering the uh, closing stages of that season. Round 8 of 10 at Mugello is coming up here on Apex Racing TV on uh, on uh, Saturday. If I can get my weekend days properly, that's a great series to be a part of. I've covered that season ever since it started earlier on this year, and it was a, a, a pretty good season to be a part of. And uh, I, I guess 
I'm, I'm not just saying that because I do those broadcasts, but I do kind of enjoy a little bit of a complicated format, gives us something to talk about before the uh, the start of those races, just waiting for some more drivers to join the interview waiting room. I must say, Russell Soto, that was a beautiful, uh, nice little kick in the shins to Formula One. I'm sure the Australian Grand Prix that's coming up this weekend, I'm not too sure, I think it is this weekend, the Australian Grand Prix is going to be about 100 times less exciting than the racing that we just saw here in the MX-5s, even though the probably the cost for that for the Formula One Australian Grand Prix is probably about 100 times more than the race that we just saw here tonight. And Russell mentioned that it's going to be a fantastic season. You mentioned it as well, Tom. And we've got a pretty good schedule up in front of us. So we've got Mid-Ohio coming up next time out. That's going to be Road Atlanta. Detroit running on Belle Isle. That's a fantastic one. of My favorite street circuits. And one of the most storied ones as well. It had a very uh, interesting tale that track had from when it opened back in the day all the way up until the last IndyCar race back in 2022. So that'll be in a few weeks' time, and that's going to be Road America, the site of this upcoming year's SCCA National Runoffs. That's going to be a pretty damn good race there at the National Park of Speed, Watkins Glen after that. Then Laguna Seca to round off the season in early May. I think we're in for a pretty damn good season as far as I'm concerned, Tom. What do you think is a track that you're looking forward to the most? Well, this is quite a nice track, isn't it? Uh, but uh, I have to say, I'm I'm quite excited to see uh, to see where we go next. That one should be a good race. Well, I, I think the last broadcast that we did before this was at Mid Ohio for a different series. I was here on Apex Racing TV, and we were running. Uh, th that was a pretty good race. We were running the MX Fives in that series as well, and if I remember correctly, that was a pretty good broadcast as well. So uh, hopefully, uh, the viewers here on Apex Racing TV will stick around here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss a thing here on Apex Racing TV, and stick around for next uh, Thursday when the series returns here on. Apex. Apex for the DRSCCA round two here with these MX-5s. I don't think we have any more drivers in the interview waiting room, so I think we'll round off this broadcast. Tom, just actually, no, I think we'll touch on the results. We haven't even looked at the results of this race yet, so we'll go through those right now. Go through the winners, the podium finishers, the top five, and the top ten. It's Oh, actually, that's a practice results. Russell Soto was the top of the practice. Then it was Justin uh, Justin Hill, the winner here from tonight's race, 3.3 seconds ahead of Russell Soto there in P2. Yanchi Lin finishing this race in third. He has to be kicking himself after how it looked like he was just in the groove and ready to take the checkered flag. He finishes this race in P number three. Christopher Murray finishes this race in fourth. David Bauer in fifth. Andrew Gross in sixth. David Moreno in seventh. Michael Schmidt in eighth. Bryce Salmon box running at your top 10. In 11th position is Richard Shahi with William Lamb in 12th. Stephen Kahn is in 13th with Garrett Whitson and Jeffrey Novak. Your top 15. Chad Giedel is in 16th with uh, David Grudzinski in 17th. Corey Gordina is in 18th with Mike Knutson and Michael Rodriguez. Your top 20. And then looking through the rest of the field, we've got Eric Christensen in P number 21, Jonathan Edwards in P22, Andrew Moed with a bean and battered MX5. He finishes this race in P23, Steven Schlesser in P24, Todd uh, Globowski in P number 25, John Grimm actually uh, dropped out of the race fairly early with the other uh, random, uh, very strange run down pit road earlier on in this race he finishes it in p number 26 jacob moed in p27 uh, edwin uh, choose in p28 aaron rudder in p29 a uh, theo gory in 30th uh, dan uh, cycle in p31 dustin crooks in 32nd reese everend in p number 33 that's dan mount running at the field a lot of drivers not actually taking the starts of this race many of them finishing 14 laps down that's a shame because it would have been awesome to see See what they could have done in this race so that's the results here from this mx5 race here at vir to cap off this fantastic night of racing action tom i'll ask you one last question before we wrap things up just thoughts on the race that we saw here tonight well i thought it was fantastic and i am thoroughly excited for next week Rob. 
Oh, I think we're in for a great season again. The next time you'll see this series here on Apex Racing TV is going to be next Thursday when the series rocks up to mid-Ohio, and I hope to see you all there. We'd like to thank once again the proud and wonderful partners of the Detroit Racing SCCA Sim Racing Series, those being Super Lap, as well as the Waterford Hills Road Racing Circuit and Michigan Turn Marshals. Without the wonderful sponsors that we have, this series would simply not be possible. As for tonight's broadcast, I think that just about does it. So for myself, Ron Mullins, Tom Dillon joining me in the commentary booth and Josh Wilkie working on the cameras in the virtual production hauler. I say thank you all so very much for watching. Have a great rest of your night and we hope to see you all once again with the DRS ECA Sim Racing Series in one week's time. Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.